Hello Dynamic Dolphins, here we are, Sandra and Andres. We came with this idea, sharing with you this video. We hope you find it handy, helpful and informative. Uh, we based this video on the answers that you provided uh, in the questionnaire. So guys, I hope you enjoy it and we will talk about um, the feedback of this video later on. <laughs> The first question refers to the best practices to work with ELs. So we have first to think about there are two types of ELs who are newcomers who have been here in the U.S. for only one, two, three years and advanced ELs, mm -hmm. right? And those who are advanced are uh, from two and a half years and on because not every process in the kit is the same thing. So the best practice for them will be to work simple. In the vocabulary, we have the same concepts in any part of the world somehow like if you talk about a dog a dog is the same thing the same animal here or in china but the word is not so what you can do is to take an image and the new word dog and put them together so they can make that relation they can make that connection also there is something that is uh, very useful as well and is to use the body language whenever you're giving them directions try to show them and model what you want them to do it's going to help a lot because they're going to understand what they have to do and connect again the words with the action they're going to remember that easier the sounds they heard and the action they're supposed to do when they hear that word so simplify the word bank is going to work for them the words in a little corner are probably pictures underline certain words for the advanced newcomers sometimes we uh, tend to think that because they understand what we are saying they can get everything but it's not always the case some of these students they are eight but they've been practicing English and if you compare this a uh, student with a uh, native there will be five years of difference in those five years of difference the experience of the native boy is gonna be larger better in, in, in regards of the English language our kids they usually speak English here but when they go home they don't hear English as much as a native speaker does. So although they're advanced we still need to work on uh, different activities in our room the next question is, how can I best communicate with parents in regards to their child's IEP when they only speak Spanish? He says, I feel bothersome always asking someone to translate for me. Okay, so here's our answer. You're not bothering us. And the best way to do it is speaking in Spanish to them. <laughs> that's their language. That's the way they're going to have um, the information clear and that's important information we want them we want them to understand so we need to make sure they get the right message okay how similar they are they are really similar because they come from the same uh, Romans roots vowels are yeah <laughs> that is a big trouble that causes a lot of trouble to us to when we're trying to pronounce words because we only have five vowel sounds and you guys have so the next question is um, talking about how to text simple phrases to our parents. If there is something you want to send home and it's not like important, you can use Google Translator. If there is something like that's very school related, we want to send home with our kids. We shared this book with you guys one time. We still got some copies here in our, and it has uh, a lot of different phrases that might work for you. So this is a good resource you can use. And it's got the English version and the Spanish. And the last one, if you feel that information is uh, important and you want to make sure the information goes home by in a very correct way, you just send us an email and we'll be glad to translate that for you. Just ask for mm -hmm. help. Okay, the other is what is valued at home that we should also value for these students in the classroom. We have to be tolerant, we have to teach all the newcomers about the American culture little by little, but being very, very tolerant. Like something we do a lot is that we, are, we touch a lot. Each yeah, other. like we're close, yeah. we're very close to each other. We like to hug a lot. Sometimes when we bother someone else, but we're just teasing each other, we can kind of push that person a little yeah, bit. What are and you it's, talking about? And, and, yeah, and we're not, and we're not being rude. It's okay in our culture. We have had some cases here in this school, and we found that the best way to try to solve that is just to explain the family and the kid that um, here in the U.S. that works in a little bit different way. How to help ELLs? students in math without translating everything okay we're not against translating but we feel that we need to be very careful with it 
because sometimes we tend to think that if the kids speak Spanish and if we translate the concept into the Spanish language, they are going to get it. Um, but sometimes it doesn't happen that way. If the student didn't get the concept in Spanish, they're not going to get it even if I'm, if I'm translating the word. What we need to do is basically model the concepts. There is not a 100% chance that the student is going to get the word if we translate it. Their needs are not based on the content, but based on the language. So just be patient and be simple, right? We have here in our room different materials we can, we'll be glad to share with you guys. Here in our room we have some materials you, you're, more than, you're more than welcome to come use. Voca academic vocabulary and mathematics and those are strategies you guys can use for social studies too, for science. We'll be glad to share these materials with you. And we also have one for assessments. And I know you'll find this one useful as well. We had here another question and the question um, was referring to what is... Dual immersion. It's basically about teaching, teaching some content in uh, their native language, which is English for everybody, then teaching the same lesson in the target language. What they see in this lesson, they're going to see the same thing in the target language. Um, the other question was basically about the ESL program, how this program works. Our objective is children who speak other language than English. We just try to assure that he gets fair education. So we help them with the language part, with academic, with the academic processes, with things with parents. How parents feel about the school? I would say that they feel good. They feel like any other mom and any other dad. They care about their kids. They care about their kids doing good in school. You feel that you have one strategy they can start using or implementing at home so they feel useful and they feel they're supporting their children. Just feel free to share it with us and we'll be glad to meet with the parent and talk about They seem to be shy. It's the because of fact, the language. Yeah, the fact of being in a, in, a, in a country where people do not understand what they say, they develop this kind of attitude of being kind of shy or being quiet mm -hmm. because they know that people, when people talk to them or when they talk to people, they don't understand each other, so... They feel afraid of saying something and having the other person, or the teacher in this case, not understanding what they're saying. They're not only facing that situation here, but also in the, in the outside. All right, um, this is it. We hope we answer all the questions you had. And if you have some extra questions, uh, we'll be glad to help you out with that. And we thank you very much for all you do for our students. Bye. Bye.